That looks good. All okay. right. It's going, huh? Okay. Yeah. What time do you want? All right. Well, I'm Gordon Lee, and uh, I'm a composer and a pianist. I live in Portland, Oregon. Um, so, I'm in uh, the classroom at Portland State, and it's a few minutes before the class begins, and so I had to... Uh, I had a, uh, uh, it was a piano transcription of Wagner's uh, Prelude to Tristan and Isolde, which I think is one of the most beautiful pieces of music ever written, even though, as I said, I detest Wagner as a human being. You know, he's thoroughly repulsed, he was a racist, and I, you know, I really cannot stand racism in any way. Um, but, so it's a dilemma, but I mean, let's face it, there are many, many artists that are more great people, but they were great artists. They were brilliant at communicating in their medium. And anyway, so I'm there and I'm playing on the piano. Uh, this, uh, and actually was part of even like, I believe sort of a theory assignment from another class to, to analyze this piece, how, you know, how the appoggiaturas and, you know, pass escape tones and all that stuff, how it all works. So I was working on that, I was playing through the piece and uh, Svoboda heard me, and so he said, "He says, oh, here." I said, "Well, what is this? Here? What you know? What is he doing here with this chord? How do you, you know what he call this?" And so he said, "Well, here, let me play." So he sat down, and he started playing. He didn't even play through the whole thing, but you know, I don't know, many measures, you know, 30, 40 measures of the piece. And and at one point, he sort of gets to a point and just stops. And I could feel that both he and I, coming from very different places. I mean, you know, he's Czech, I'm American, he's, you know, 15, 20 years older than me, and, but, you know, so we have different perspectives, but we both were really moved by the music. At the same time, we are, both he and I, are very well aware of who Wagner was, and he just sort of stops and looks down and sighs, and he goes, and then looks at me sideways, and he goes, you know, Wagner was a very egotistical. I mean, it was it was this you know kind of priceless uh, uh, little lesson there that uh, at least you know you, you can't allow yourself to be even though the music is beautiful you can't allow yourself to be seduced by that into thinking he was some kind of great guy you know and Svoboda was just kind of reminding me of that it was uh, it was it was very powerful moving moment that, that happened right there before class right <laughs> you know what Thomas so I mean that was just one in, moment in particular that was strong <laughs> okay yeah. As you were speaking, I thought something that uh, Tom Svoboda said, that he, uh, he liked to, to compose. One of the reasons that he was inspired to compose was that uh, you could capture the high from improvising. Right? Like you're just going, and you're just really high on what you're doing. Yeah, right. And you can, yeah. you can capture that so that somebody a hundred years from now, yeah. in a different right. country, right. in a different time, right. can take that paper out yes, right. and get that high. Sure, right, you know, yes. It's not exactly the sure. same, but it, right, it's a, right. it's a well, whiff of it. You know? Yeah, well, so, certainly you can, uh, you know, that's a wonderful thing about it. Say, and, and most, uh, as, and I study with Tom Svoboda, so I, I know Tom very well, um, uh, that all the great uh, classical composers, or in my opinion, all the great ones, Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, Chopin, Debussy, Stravinsky, I mean, on and on, they all improvised a lot. That was very important to them. And improvisation would frequently be part of their performances and their concerts. Um, and what's so really magical about that is, is certainly if you're working on a Beethoven sonata, where he's following a very strict form sometimes, but, but nevertheless, he, he, I feel, and, and from reading about what he said, he got his ideas from improvising. And you feel like you are right inside the mind of somebody who died 200 years ago. And that's incredible. That's almost supernatural, actually.